Supposing you and your friends were planned for a short trip of vacation at out of town location by tomorrow. Everyone is talking about should we all bring along a raincoat in case of raining? And obviously, there's no straightforward answer for it. People who believe it might be raining tomorrow will bring along the raincoat. And those who are not believing in it may not bring along the raincoat. So there is no one answer for it. Different decisions, hence, is made due to different kinds of behavior and mindset. Guys, don't you realize such phenomena also apply and appear in the context of financial management in making all financial decisions. And all these behaviors are collectively termed behavioral finance. Hello, my name is Zikang Chan, the expert tutor for advanced financial management. This topic explainer is about impact of behavioral finance on financial strategies. In these sessions of the topic explainer, the discussions will be made mainly on ACCA resources, primarily from the study hub. For learning purpose, you are advised to refer to the relevant chapters. For this topic explainer, it is found in chapter 2, particularly section 2.1 and to be more precise, 2.1.5 about behavioral finance. For practice purpose, you are advised to visit ranges of quizzes relating to the chapter, and ranges of practice questions, which either appearing in the form of exam format revision questions, are the revision questions, and study questions for practice. Finally, upon wrapping up the knowledge, recapping the knowledge will be essential by visiting flashcards, providing you ranges of terminology on all the technical terms. And last but not least, technical article, particularly title, Patterns of Behavior, will be worth reading. And that followed by the ranges of past year's questions found on practice perform and feedbacks, suggestions given in examiner's report were highly recommended to be used as learning purpose. At the first part of this video, I'll take you through what is behavioral finance, what gives rise to ranges of all such behavior, and followed by what exactly are the ranges and the types of behavioral finance that were mentioned, implications of behavioral finance on financial strategies of investors and businesses. Finally, how can behavioral finance contribute to market efficiency? Towards the end of this video, the demonstrations will be made referring to an extract of a past year's questions pertaining to behavioral finance. So guys, what exactly is behavioral finance? According to the author, it describes an influence of psychology on behavior of financial practitioner. But before we plug in all these technical terms to understand how financial practitioner behave in different psychological state of condition. Let's revisit the example of the short vacations that mentioned at the beginning of this video. People or team member in the holiday tour may prefer not to bring along a raincoat. Perhaps the reason of making such a decision could be due to they refer to the weather at the same point in the past. So based upon the track record in the history, at the same point in the past, it was not raining. So with this assumption that it may repeat the same weather conditions on tomorrow that just happened in the past at one part of time, people were therefore decided not to bring the raincoat. That would be one of the explanations on the behavior. Secondly, people may believe that in the past couple of days or weeks, the location has not been raining. So therefore, there could be a possibility that tomorrow may be raining. And this therefore explains the other group of people may say, I may want to bring along the raincoat because it has not been raining for the last consecutive days. I may want to assume that tomorrow may be raining. So that would trigger a different decision-making. Alternatively, 
another team member may say, well, I would believe that based upon the track records of not raining, instead of believing it may be raining tomorrow, the other group member would say, I believe the trend may persist. In other words, a sunny weather condition will be assumed by another team member. As such, this explains why another team member may not want to bring along the raincoat. Well, obviously, another team member also do not prefer to bring along the raincoat for another reason and say, but because of these sunny weather that found in the past of this location, they believe this momentum may continue in the future. Guys, do you notice? All these explanations would tend to tell why is the decisions being made due to different state of mind and belief. And all these things in simple were described by these explanations on the definitions of behavioral finance, the influence of psychology on behavior of an individual. Let's apply it into financial management. The behavioral finance explain in reality, financial decisions made are not necessarily at all times rational. Instead, many financial decisions made were irrational. It is same goes to the example of the vacation with the raincoats to bring along or the otherwise. Guys, it is worth for you to take note what it meant by rational decisions making. As what you may have learned in other parts of the syllabus, decisions should be made based upon relevant information that is made available. So what do we mean by relevant information? Information that arise in the future, and ideally it is specific and cash flow related. These are terms as relevant information that will be considered in making financial decisions. And all these decisions were made with considerations on objectives that to be met. In running a business or a company, it is always common to hear that the fundamental, the primary objectives of running a business is always aimed to maximize the wealth of the shareholder, which is exactly what it meant by maximizing the utility of the business operation. And running the business activity, it's always expected to encounter risk. So that is equally important to bring up the considerations on the risk appetite. In the rational decision-making mindsets, without any further additional evidence or information indicating the riskiness of the outcome, one should behave in the form of risk neutral. So these are the three main conditions to describe what it meant by a rational decision maker. However, behavioral finance has proven that it may not be the case in many of the occasions. So from there, it therefore tells behavioral finance therefore discover or unveil the justifications for many types of financial decision among the common one, investment decisions that found in many businesses as well as strategy adopted by individual investors, board members, or managers of the company. All these decisions tend to be affected not only by rational mentality, but it is heavily affected by ranges of irrational behavior. This brings up the need to understand what exactly are the ranges and the types of behavioral finance. To understand, the types of behavioral finance, referring to the study hub, you will notice it is an overwhelming answer for it. There are a total of 17 types of behavioral finances discovered. So how exactly to make your life easier to understand better on what exactly these behavioral finances are all about? My suggestion is try to imagine each and every type of these behavioral finance is prompt to challenge the validity of the three conditions that claim people make, make decisions in a rational manner. In other words, the challenge is first to prove not necessarily everyone is making decisions based on relevant information. Secondly, 
another group of behavioral finance will then prove not everyone tends to behave in a risk-neutral attitude. It may be occasions where people tend to behave in a risk-seeking attitude or risk-averse attitude. Both of these disturbance will ultimately lead to a disturbance on achieving rational objective that was meant to be maximizing utilities or the wealth of the shareholders, which behavioral finance proven it may not be necessarily true. People tend to achieve in the suboptimal objective at most of the time. So what exactly are those behavioral finance that cause the disturbance and the challenges in meeting all the three criteria? Guys, let's take a look at the first category. There are five main types of behavior which fall under behavioral finance that are to disturb the usage of relevant information in decision making, anchoring, gambler fallacy, positive feedback, noise trading, and trapment. You should spend time looking at and reading up study hub as far as the technical article for full detail of explanation with example. I would like to quote you a two simple example by making use of these two of out of the five behavioral finances that disturb the usage of relevant information. Do you still remember the example I quote for the holiday when team member believe at one point of the time in the past, the weather of that particular day is sunny. So that makes the person believe that same weather condition may repeat again. These therefore indicate a person is making the decision based on a point of the historical result as a decision-making criteria. That anchor point is describing such behavior, anchoring. Same thing applied in financial management. Decision maker, example, investor, may believe the performance of the share price will move up or down at this point of time based upon the performance at one point of the time in the past. Secondly, gambler fallacy. Based upon the prediction on tomorrow's weather, whether it is going to rain at the holiday vacation's location, the person may look at the trends of the weather conditions in the past of that location. Should the locations in the past, as mentioned at the beginning of the video, was proven sunny weather. This person may therefore believe maybe the sunny weather will come to the end. So tomorrow, they will put a bet and speculating. There may be raining tomorrow. So with this kind of speculation, the person in the team may want to bring along the raincoat. Same thing apply for the prediction on the movement of share price for the investor based upon the past trends of the movement that believe the trend may come to the end and the reverse may happen. This mentality we we'll call gambler fallacy. Guys, there are many illustrations and examples that were found in the study hub and article explaining the rest of the behavior of finances. Apart from the first five, Let's visit the other group of behavioral finances that were disturbing the risk-neutral attitudes of an investor. Guys, they were one of these categories of behavior that tends to encourage investor or decision-maker tends to be risk-seeking, and this behavior is termed overconfidence. Whereas, they may have some other behavior that may seduce the person or the investor tends to be risk averse. And these source of the seduction is coming from three different types of behavior, namely conservatism, ambiguity aversion, regret aversion. So these could be the explanations why someone tends to be reversed reservers or tends to be behave conservatively, which otherwise not necessary. Last but not least, the other group of behavioral finance that discovered that this time 
it may lead the investor or decision maker to be undecisive as to whether they should be reseeking or they should be reserved. So these undecisive directions of the risk appetite may be led by ranges of behavior such as representativeness, momentum effect, narrow framing, confirmation bias, availability bias, and last but not least, miscalculation of probabilities. Guys, do you still remember the illustrations I gave at the beginning on the vacation? When someone believed that if the weather in the past has been a sunny weather on the locations for the holiday, same may have happened in the future the following the trend. That seems to be the opposite mindset of gambler fallacy. And this kind of assumption on a representation from the past that is to be continued to the future. This were termed as representativeness behavior. It could be the same kind of mindset and answer in the mind, however, explaining by different reasoning and mindset. And these may be called momentum effect, where people may believe tomorrow may not be raining just because that in the past it has not been raining. So they believe this kind of momentum tends to continue. So with this kind of momentum belief, people will therefore make the decisions accordingly. So this would call momentum effects. So guys, spend some time, go through the study hub, find out the reason and the meaning of all of other behavior discovered in behavioral finance. Finally, with the distortion on the rationale behavior by looking at relevant information, and a distortion or the risk-neutral attitude, there will be a high possibility that these behavior may lead to a deviation from achieving rational objectives. So when it comes to the challenge on making decisions that lead to rational objectives, these are two other possible types of behavior that is covered by behavioral finance cognitive dissonance, and loss aversion bias. So how does this apply to the example of the vacation? You may simply refuse to bring a raincoat for the short trip tomorrow just because that you want to prove to people that your decision making is right, despite the fact all the evidences, including the weather forecast from the media, have said there will be a high chance that Tomorrow, there will be a raining weather on the locations for where your locations for the vacations is located. Just that you refuse to admit the wrong decisions you make. You insist on holding back your original decision. This is called connective dissonance. Don't you think so, guys? It is equally common found in a lot of financial decision made and financial strategy formulated by businesses that tends to be suboptimal, yet people just refuse to admit the mistake, they will insist to carry on such decision and strategy. So guys, after hearing some of the explanations and demonstrations on some of these type of behavior that found in behavioral finance, how would these be affecting financial strategy of investors and businesses? Here's the answer. Financial decision made that influenced by behavior of finances may reflect mispricing of asset. An investor, a decision maker, may have ended up overpaying the price in acquiring the asset or maybe disposing the price at undervalue. So all these are termed mispricing of asset. At the same time, misalignment a mismatch of one's desired risk appetite could be an influence as a result of behavioral finances. And ultimately, all these distortion may lead to deviation from the desired financial objectives. These therefore explain how different types of behavior discovered in behavioral finances distort the achievement or reflecting ranges of rational behavior. Guys, with all these findings, how exactly 
behavioral finances then explain and affect market efficiency? Well, there are two ways of thoughts. One, behavioral finance is possibly to prove that it's a contradiction with what the findings that is covered by efficient market hypothesis. Meaning, the EMH believed share prices in the market should reflect the information that make available at one part of time, which depending on level of stock market efficiency. However, behavioral finance explain not necessarily true. People make decisions at an irrational conditions at many points of the occasion. But because of these irrational decisions to be made, behavioral finance, however, contribute to the market efficiency on the other way. Given that different financial decisions were actually made by different individuals or practitioners that behave differently. In other words, at any point of the price level of an asset, example, share or bond, there will be people that prompt to invest. There will also prompt to be people that prompt to sell the asset. Even there's a supply, there's a demand in the market for the asset that create liquidity that create the trading activities of all assets. And creations of activities in trading and liquidity in the market, that will therefore contribute to improve the market efficiency. And this market efficiency is providing an opportunity for every individual to learn and realize the mistake they make from the irrational behavior in long term. Hopefully, one will behave towards more rational manner. So guys, time for us to take a look at how ranges of behaviors that discussed a moment ago that apply into the following extracts of the past year's questions. Well, as mentioned, this is an extract of the past exam questions. Please pause the video, read through the requirement, think through your answer plan. The requirement is asking, discussed, behavioral factors that may have led to businesses such as metaverse tech being overly valued. So this is clearly explaining why is that the, the price, the share price of this company is overly stated. Well, guys, pausing the video, go through the information carefully. Based on these extracts, what do you have to realize to answer questions on behavioral finance? Here are some advices for you. Number one, when you go through the information given by the story and the scenario, identify, is there any decisions? Is there any descriptions regarding prices, regarding values of an asset that seems to be out of the norm? Or is there any kind of decision made or any strategies that formulated not explained by rational behavior? When you discover any of those evidences, try to ask yourself, what could be out of the 17 types of the irrational behavior, which of it would be possibly be explaining such phenomena? Once you identify a potential irrational behavior, the last things that you need to figure out is that how do you connect them? How do you try to look for evidences from the scenario to join up the phenomena as described in the scenario and explain by this particular this irrational behavior that you may want to articulate, ensuring that the articulation is systematic well in manner. This is how you form your answer for answering questions pertaining to behavioral finance. So guys, I would therefore suggest by going through the extract of this information, you will notice W or West Pali company. It's the first company that is described in these questions based upon background information such as listed company as a background, retailer businesses, as the nature of business operation, selling ranges of foods and household goods. This company has been performing relatively well. 
due to the following critical success factor as mentioned. Followed by the share price performance of this company in the recent year has performed better than many of the competitor or player in the retail sector. The questions went on tells you about the disappointing share price performance on the retail sector. So on one hand, it is trying to show how outstanding the performance of West Parley comparing to other player. But at the same time, guys, do you see the word exception? The questions is going on and telling us, while share prices of many retail sectors company are done poorly, there is one exception where the share price in the retail sector specializing in computers and high technology goods, however, are doing pretty well. This share price seems to show a boom, obviously. However, based upon findings and comments from some analysts, they believe this share price in the high tech sectors has been significantly higher than what it sounds to be. Should rational mindset is applied on valuing such share? Guys, don't you think so? That provides a crucial hint, something that is not rational. So pick this up and start creating the idea of what could be the type of irrational behavior that could help to explain such an abnormally high share prices in this industry. Followed by, here comes another target, Metaverse Company. Well, they are another listed company. And why is that a center of attention? That's simply because that Metaverse Company is now becoming a target of acquisitions by West Parley. Keep it short, a Metaverse Company, the target company, it has two types of store, home and tech. Keeping an eye, about metaverse tech as what relating to part A of the questions. These segments of the businesses involved in selling computers and phones. Guys, if you connect the nature of these businesses with the outstanding share price performance in computer and high tech sector, don't you think these is trying to tell you that the share price performance or the value of these businesses are also tends to be overly valued if you manage to connect these together. This therefore explain why the following statements happen to be so. West Parley would therefore plan to take the advantage on the current values relating to the business such as the technology company like Metroverse Tech. So therefore, they would like to quote the price of Metroverse Tech based upon PE ratio instead of following the value that derived by it believed to be a more rational approach evaluation looking at future free cash flow. However, that is not the value that Vespali may be looking at. Instead, they prefer to refer to another valuation model, PE ratio, that tends to refer to the historical performance in the past at one point of time. So guys, that seems to provide hint and clue for another irrational behavior such as anchoring. Finally, part of the plan for Metaverse Company, it's the, the moment the acquisitions of all the share capitals of M Company has been completed. W, West Poly Company, would like to sell Metaverse Tech because of the reason it doesn't fit well in the strategy, but at the same time, they will also like to take advantage on the overvaluations of the businesses in Metroverse Tech. So guys, spend some time, organize your creativity. What are the irrational behavior that could ties back to the clue that marked with the questions marked over here? So here is a bit of the demonstrations of my answer planning. I may want to start telling the marketing team that the behavioral factors that were asked to explain this phenomena may be pertaining to the three of the main criteria or condition as mentioned a moment ago that form rational decision making. 
So I will need to pick up those irrational behavior that serve to be a challenge to any of the three conditions. You may want to think about identifying at least one of the irrational behavior that go under the challenge of each of these three characteristics. Then connect back to the scenario and form a solid and well-articulated justification. So here is the demonstrations on one of the irrational behavior I may pick it up, noise trading. And let's take a look at how I articulate with the justifications of the proof. Why do I make myself believe that noise trading seems to be found in the above phenomena on the valuations of the share prices in metaverse tech industry that tends to be overly valued? I say the boom in the share prices of this high tech company may have indicated a high demand for shares in this sector. What make this happen? And I say this pattern and trend may therefore have created noises for other investors to just follow by applying the similar investment strategy. And these noises will therefore help to escalate the rising trend in the share price. So that's how I explain the phenomena that explained by noise trading. And guys, pause the video. Spend some time, take a look at how the model answer has produced with segregation based upon headings and describing each type of irrational behavior that based upon the evidences that provided in the scenario. Once you have gone through these explanations from the model answer, you will notice there are six different types of behavioral finances discovered with all the supporting explanation. So guys, with this video, I hope you will understand that behavioral finances is appearing not only in the context of financial management, but it is some things that explain every movement and decision we make in life. With that, thank you for watching.